I have stared at code for so long that its text has lost all meaning. I have spent hours creating a pixelated world and creatures that when I looked away, I could glimpse the pixels of the real world. Yes, I have done all this. But what I have done recently required a precision I did not anticipate. I warn you now, Watcher, this tale is not for the faint of heart. So if you're brave enough, I will tell you how I created the UI for Lost Hearts. So steal yourself, Watcher, for now we begin. Okay, so we're here at the start menu. Please ignore the giant blank spot at the top. The game's title is going to be going there, and I haven't made it yet. I made the button art in an ace spray. You might notice the start button is a bit different than the others. I wanted the player's eye to be drawn to the start button after looking at the game's title, and thought making it look a bit different would help. Pressing the start button launches the player into the tutorial level. Uh, the credits button launches a blank screen. That's fun, right? And the quit button launches another menu element, asking you to confirm your decision before exiting the game. More on how that menu works later. So to get these buttons to work, I simply connected the button's pressed signal to functions inside the start menu script. The start and credits buttons just load different scenes. The scenes they load depends on exported string variables that I have. The quit button simply instantiates the yes no menu. So that's pretty much the start menu. Now let's get into the nitty gritty of the yes no menu I showed off earlier. So here's that yes no menu again. And real quick, this menu is used by being instantiated in scenes that I need it. Probably not the best solution for this, but it works. And here's the code for it. The no button is simple enough. When it's called, the menu gets rid of itself by calling Q free. The yes button is a bit more complex. The yes button can either quit out of the game or it can load a new scene. It decides this by using a boolean called is quit game. If the variable is true, hitting the yes button quits the game, and if it's false, the yes button loads the scene based on the string scene to load. How this variable is set is pretty interesting, at least to me. I'm auto-loading this script in the project settings. When the game starts, a version of the script is already loaded and I can manipulate the variable values simply by calling yes no menu.scene to load. This is cool because I can change this variable in other scripts without having to locate the node and change it manually. But because every time I use this menu it's being instantiated, I have to refer to the auto-loaded script every time I want to change the value in the instance. If I was going to do this over, I would auto-load the scene and simply hide it when I wasn't using it. I think that would make more sense. I could probably fix it, but it's such a small thing and it's not worth me fixing at this point. Besides the start menu, this menu also shows up in the pause menu. Speaking of the pause menu, here's a bad transition to something completely unrelated. Sorry to interrupt what I'm sure is a riveting and nail-biting update to Lost Hearts, but I wanted to bring something to your attention. It's a new channel and a newer game developer called, I hope I'm pronouncing this right, Notati. So what you see playing behind me is Notati's recently finished project called Partix. It's available on itch.io and it's a ton of fun and I've been playing it obviously. So the link to Notati's channel plus the trailer to Partix is in the description below. Just a quick note, in the trailer to Partix, there's a link to the game in case you're interested. So please go check that out. Now back to the video. Ah. Back from the cool but unrelated thing I see. Okay, let's hop into the pause menu. So this is more of the same. Hitting the resume button releases the menu by using Q free and hitting quit pops up the yes no menu. Hitting yes in the yes no menu loads the start menu. The two big pains getting this menu to work was getting the menu to show up in the proper place on the screen and number two, pausing and unpausing the game. The first issue happened because I'm using a 2D camera to follow the player around. So the menu was popping up in weird places. This ended up being as simple as taking the pause menu and attaching it to a canvas layer. So to get the game to pause was easy. In the level manager, I simply pause the game, which I think stops all process functions from running. Getting it to unpause was the tricky part for me. 
I ended up having the pause menu emit a signal to the level manager before deleting itself. When the level manager receives a signal, the unpause game function runs and the game resumes. I don't want to spend too much time on this because I have a feeling this video is getting pretty long. What you're seeing now are pages of my game development notebook. More specifically, the plans and designs of me laying out the UI before I even logged into a computer to make it. This made the process of creating and laying out the menus so much faster and smoother. I know it's said a lot, but planning really is a good idea, and it's advice I don't always follow. But this week, I really felt what a difference planning can make, and I invite you to plan more if you feel like you're not doing enough. I see your will is still strong, if not a bit shaken. That is good, Watcher. In all seriousness, it's been a while since I've done a funny skit for one of my videos, and it feels good to do it again. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing or liking the video. If uh, you got something to say, throw it in the comments. And as always, have a good day or night whenever you're watching this, and have a good one. Bye. But the only thing in life that has meaning Are the things you gotta work for, believe me